Good morning, everyone, and thank you for, for coming today. This is uh, Beyond the Band-Aid, the critical difference between ethics and compliance training and why it matters to you. My name is Mark Putnam. I am the CEO of Global Ethics Solutions, and um, I'm delighted to be here this month. We offer this webinar each month and, and feature a different speaker uh, in the topic of ethics and compliance in the area. So thank you for coming, and, and today's a great topic because um, we want our ethics training to be effective and we want it to really make a difference. And you know, the, we want to go beyond just a Band-Aid approach, which is just um, putting a Band-Aid on a, on, a, on a bleed. You know, it's not, it's not curing or helping, it's just, uh, it's just stopping the bleeding. So we wanna go beyond just stopping the bleeding. So, um, this is, this is a great topic, and so I want you to think about some questions to consider as we go. Um, so here are some questions. Think about your company's training programs. First, um, how can I teach ethics and compliance and really make it stick? And this is, this is really what we all want, right? We, we don't want to just read a list of rules, show a PowerPoint. We want it to stick, and, and I know it's been my mission ever since I've started doing this uh, since 1999, um, I, I want to make a difference. I want to. I want to know that I've taught something, I've I've helped somebody, and that this is really going to stick, and maybe they'll be a better person as a result. So um, I, that's why I, I I really want today to be clear that there is there are some differences between ethics training and compliance training. Both are important, and we can if when we, when we understand that we can back up and get a, a big picture of what's going on and what's effective. So um, that's important. And what can I do to get meaning back into ethics and compliance programs? So what 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 do I? How can I get meaning into it? Make it meaningful, and that's that's in our company's slogan is to make compliance meaningful. Uh, how do I get my compliance out of a tra compliance training out of a rut? And maybe you feel like that. Maybe you feel like you're just going through the motions. You're doing a PowerPoint. You do it every every couple of months for new hires, you know, and people kind of falling asleep in the back, and nobody really cares. But it's something you have to do as a part of your code of, code of conduct and due diligence and all that. So um, maybe you're finding yourself in a rut. Um, the, another question is how can our ethics training programs change our, the culture of our company? And I love this. I mean, culture change is really what I'm about. I wanna create an ethical culture. I don't wanna create a, a culture where people are fearful, where really it's a, it's a, it's a, a punishment reward approach of, of, of training. Well, if you do this wrong, this will happen. I wanna create a culture where people, people make, the, make the right choices. They, the, the, the whole culture of the company um, is an ethical culture and it starts from the top. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. And finally, how can I make a genuine positive difference in the lives of people and in our society? I mean, we're talking about ethics. We're talking about character and honesty. And these, this is not just something that we, that we, uh, that we uh, leave at work. And, and likewise, we don't, we don't leave our ethics at the door when we come for work in the, come to work in the morning. So there is this element of ethics and compliance training, a character element that goes beyond just our workplace. So we want to change lives. I mean, to have somebody say in a, in a, in a seminar, wow, that made me think, and I'm, and now I'm thinking differently. Um, that really, that's really rewarding. And maybe we can make a difference in our society and in the culture and our, in our, in our industry. So that's, that's really important. So those are some questions to ponder as we jump into this. Um, and this first slide talks about the spirit of the law or the letter of the law. And this is really important because we want to really define why we're doing ethics training. So first of all, compliance is the letter of the law. Now, I, we need to have both of these. I and mean, this is the punchline of this whole webinar this morning, is we need to have the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. So compliance, that's the letter of the law. That's a reactive concept, all right? This is our code of conduct. We have to cover this information. This is compliance. It's enforceable. If there, if it is not, if it's not done, uh, then there are consequences. And really, the choice is to obey or not to obey. That's it. There's this is this is what you do, and this is this is necessary because we have to actually teach concepts and and skills and um, and especially um, 
you know, in our, in our codes of conduct of things that we just have to get through. But, you know, we don't have to stop there. We, can, we should be talking about the spirit of the law. And I, I love this concept because, you know, um, it's, it's a proactive concept to think about the spirit of the law. Because to, 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 to approach ethics this way, um, we're thinking, well, why does this matter? How is this going to help? So it, it's a proactive concept. And to obey is a choice. I mean, uh, how I obey and when and why and where and what are the consequences? I mean, we all are full of choices. And I think that when, when we go out through our day, I mean, you would be surprised if you really sat down and thought about all of the, um, all the ethical, just those little decisions you have to make the whole day. There's so many things that are not necessarily written down in a code of conduct. You use your, your gut instincts. You use your feelings. You use your experience. Um, you know, you have choices to make, and that's the spirit of the law, and it's not necessarily enforceable. And we have, you know, a lot of scandals you hear about in the news or the media. You know, the uh, the person will say, well, you know, they, they I followed the letter of the law. So, and of course, the, the scandal is not that they they didn't uh, follow the the letter of the law. It's that they violated the spirit of the law. So it's important that you understand this. And, and like I said, the punchline of today's webinar is that we need both the spirit of the law and compliance, the letter of the law. So we're going to try to um, talk about how to do that, how companies can do it, and really just maybe some practical um, approaches that you can use to in, in your in your company. So I have some examples here, um, compliance and ethics. So on the compliance side, you have your code of conduct. Okay, these are really not negotiable. Sexual harassment, uh, diversity, antitrust, Sarbanes-Oxley, I mean, all of the other regulations that go in your industry. You know, there's financial industry um, compliance issues. There's, I mean, every industry has its own set of compliance issues, and these are non-negotiable. You have to teach these. But I'm going to say, hold on, what can we do in the ethics area? How can we incorporate ethics within these things? And this is where we kind of make our PowerPoints and make our training programs um, this is where the meaning comes, and this is where we can really start thinking about um, approaching these character, these character sides of it. And um, on that side, we have decision making. Every code of conduct training should have some type of decision making model, and I love it. And I, I teach a course on decision making, and and I think it's so important that we that we include that even in our code, code of conduct. And good codes of conduct have these steps. Maybe there's the the nine steps or the four steps or the through however, however that works out for your company that you have a ethical decision making model and it's ethics involves making good choices um you know values like integrity and honesty uh, we can talk about these things i like to talk about honesty it's, it's fascinating to get people in a room and to, to try to nail down what is honesty what is what is this thing that we try to we all talk about i want to be honest but what does that mean what does that look like and you know it's okay to talk about that in an ethics and compliance training because it really helps um give meaning to these compliance pieces here um character and i i this is this has been since the start i started doing this really i think of myself as, as an ethics and compliance trainer as i'm in the character business um i i want to develop people of character who, who who understand the codes of conduct and who understand these things, but also have this intrinsic moral code who have character that really goes beyond just the, you know, following the letter of the law. This is where that spirit of the law comes in. And then leadership. Uh, we want to have, we, you know, you, I, I think it needs, we need to teach leadership even in we, every ethics and compliance training, you know, you can be a leader and, you know, here's, here's, what, here's what we expect from leaders and here's what's going on because ethics and compliance training really starts from the top. And so I think leadership should be important. So included. So we have on the compliance side, codes of conduct, harassment, diversity, all that kinds of things. On the ethics side, we have decision making, good choices, integrity, honesty, character, and leadership, and of course, many others that you may have. Um, and you might think about it, I, I, uh, I know we have a mostly call-ins today, but um, consider the kinds of ethics training done in your company. And you have some examples, and you can put those in the chat as, as we talk. Always like to hear that. 
does your does your training tend to be um, on the compliance side or ethics side? Is it more letter of the law or spirit of the law, or does it do both? And I'm going to argue that you definitely can do both. And I'm going to show you some examples in just a minute um, of some companies who really pull this off nicely. Um, so let's talk about compliance and ethics, okay? Uh, apples and oranges, really. They're both fruit, okay, but they're both different. So the training that you do in your company needs to be different. You can't just do the same old PowerPoint. We need to think differently. So like I alluded to earlier, I want you to be thinking about those points in your code of conduct that maybe we can talk about honesty and integrity and some of these things. So we, those two time, kinds of training are different. Now you can incorporate them or you can have, um, I would encourage you to have um, a, a training on character. Talk, I mean, have in the sessions, I mean, in your staff meetings or trainings, talk about the values of your company, why they're important. I mean, that's, that's ethics. It's about teaching these values and character traits, and, and um, that's, that's important. So I think that, you know, compliance, you know, maybe you don't have the opportunity to have these integrate, but there are many opportunities and many places where you can find the ethics and the compliance training. But right now, I want you to consider how different they are and why, why you need both. Um, so ask yourself, is the purpose of your ethics training just to fulfill a requirement, a have to, or is it a chosen proactive approach to help deal with future situations? And the key here is proactive and future situations. I mean, um, ethics training is just, uh, a compliance training is, is, is that letter of the law. I mean, we, we did it, we checked it off, and here's the consequences. Well, we know that there, there will be future situations, so we want to develop the kinds of decision-making and the kinds of character that will, um, that when these situations come up in the future, um, we've, we've really developed people that can make those choices. So, you know, success demands a singleness of purpose. I love that quote, a singleness of purpose. So we need to really have purpose in our ethics training. So, Band-Aids. I talked to, that's the name of this webinar today. It's Band-Aids. And so, what are the Band-Aids? Well, Band-Aids are, you know, they, we, when there's a problem, it's a quick fix. I mean, you scrape your knee, you pull, you know, you whip out the first aid kit, put a Band-Aid on it. It even looks like skin. I mean, it, it appears that the problem is is disappeared, it's gone away, so we, you know, we, we, we don't have to, um, it appears that the problem is, is being fixed, but it lacks thoughtful consideration of cause and effect. And so a lot of ethics programs, this is kind of where they get bogged down in the routine of, of the training. So it, it, this whole concept of slapping a bandit on it, you know what, we have, we did our training, our quarterly training. It, it cheapens the concept of ethics because people, they, they kind of get numb to it and they've seen it before. They don't think about it. It does not really buy in. So it cheapens the whole concept of ethics. And Band-Aids undermine, undermine skills of discernment and moral decision making. And this is huge. I mean, we don't have robots coming into our workplaces. When we hire somebody, we hire a human being who they're used to making choices. They have, they have a moral, they have moral values. They have principles. They have strategies. They've been spending their whole life solving problems and dealing with things and making moral decisions. We hire these people and they walk into our workplace and when we just slap band-aids on things and we show that, well, you know, this is how we deal with problems, then it undermines that the fact that we want to um, foster those skills and nurture those skills of discernment because we need people to have discernment because so much of ethics in the workplace, it's not just clear cut. There are, there are, um, uh, there are many, many uh, gray areas, and we need discernment and decision making. So the Band-Aid doesn't do that. It's just, you know, cause and effect, um, uh, crime and punishment, that's where it lands. So this is what we want to avoid. This is the Band-Aids that we see put on it. So what are your barriers? I mean, you can put this in the chat if you want to. You know, what are some of the barriers? And this is what I hear all the time when, when I'm talking to companies. Big thing is money. It just, you know, I mean, I can just, 
I, I don't have the money to hire somebody or to go find these courses or really the time to pay people to be in these extra trainings about character or honesty or, or integrity or something. So it's a money issue. Uh, maybe it's time. I mean, you have to pull people out of every training that's, uh, you know, two hours or four hours or a day of lost productivity, maybe just development, time and development. There's a lot of reasons. The tools and infrastructure, maybe you lack, um, you're a smaller company and you don't have an LMS for training and you don't, you know, maybe you're the lone HR person of 50 or 100 employees. And I mean, that's one more thing. You got your payroll and your ethics training and that's ethics training is pretty much you know low on that priority list if you're a, you know a sole hr person or you're pretty stretched beyond where you can be and uh, leadership no leadership buy-in um if, if you're if your company leadership doesn't have um a really a motivation to do this it doesn't happen maybe there's systemic dysfunction i mean you might have a company where that's just there's just it's a dysfunctional place it's in chaos maybe it's it's uh you're just trying to rebuild it from scratch or something but maybe there's systemic dysfunction as the barrier to really making um to to, to taking this band-aid off um maybe it just lacks per maybe your company just lacks purpose and vision I mean, sometimes it just takes somebody, usually a leader, a CEO, to just sit down and say, you know what, here's the purpose. We want to build an ethical culture. This is what's important to us. Here's my vision for making it happen. Maybe that's all it takes. And maybe somebody in this webinar today, that's all it would take is getting out there and, 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 and creating that purpose and vision. And priorities. Like I said earlier, maybe this is just, I mean, ethics training, I mean, compliance training, yes, you have to do it. Providing ethics training or even trying to integrate that into your compliance training, it's just a priority that just simply, you know, there's no time or it's just not, not where the direction the company's going. So those are the barriers. I'm sure that you have a lot of those. You're welcome to put those in the chat. Always like to, to hear from you and interested to hear what kinds of barriers you've seen. So these are the most, these are the big ones, time, money, tools, leadership, dysfunction, purpose, and vision, and priorities. So those are the, those are the barriers. So now let's take a look at some um, sutures. <laughs> so the Band-Aid goes on the problem. The suture goes actually start stitching this thing back together. So the first suture is, is, suture is to make um, training ongoing. Okay, so it's not, I call it drive, I call it one time drive by ethics training. You know, we hear in the news a drive by shooting, you know, the car goes by and, you know, blood splatters. It's like, it's just like chaos. We just do it once and then the car zooms away. Well, you know, this is, this is not drive, this is not drive by training, this is ongoing training. You know, this says, you know, we're going to just talk about this once a month. It can even be ongoing as in sending an article out, forwarding, um, you know, inspirational quotes, just building the culture, um, making this whole thing ongoing. There needs to be some consistency about it. The second, our skills are taught, modeled, and reinforced. We need to actually teach and model the skills that we want. And I'm a, I, I say this a lot in my seminars that, that we need to teach the behavior we want. You, we assume that everybody comes into our workplace and they, should, they know what right and wrong is. They know how to make ethical decisions and we just teach them the rules and they'll figure it out and make the best decisions. But that's really not how it works. We need to teach the skills we want. We need to teach them that decision-making model. And we need to model it and with good leadership and we need to reinforce it. So on, the sutures are on make this ongoing. Teach what you need. Um, ethical theories and research are explained and internalized. And you know, it's okay to get a little philosophical. I mean, it's okay. I mean, talk about ethical theories. People like to think, people like to have their um, their understanding expanded. So explain these things, explain ethical theories, and there's lots out there. Uh, you don't have to get into Plato and Aristotle, but you know, it's, it's good to think about those kinds of things and try to internalize, you know, internalize this so that employees make these connections to the code of conduct. Why, what's, why is this code of, what's this in the code of conduct and how does it, what does it mean to me? And it's that meaning piece that we want those ethical theories and principles and concepts to be internalized. And making ethical resources available. I mean, research, articles, research, um, 
I know at our company, at Global Ethics Solutions, we have a whole article archive that we have free for, for really anyone who wants to forward those, put them in your newsletters. I mean, going out and finding websites and, like I said, inspirational quotes and finding stories that inspire people. Forward these things. Like them. Put them on your um, on your company webpage. And, you know, this is this is part of that ongoing teaching that we do all the time. And making real-life case studies and scenarios. So we, we need to make sure that you're using those case studies and scenarios. That may, this has to be the real deal. People know when you're, when you're just um, throwing up the PowerPoint and just moving through it. I want to show you a couple examples. This is um, a, a company that I work with, Parker. Um, this company here has uh, – this is, this is their Winning with Integrity program. Now, this is like the big – Okay, this is like the Cadillac, all right? You've got the, you may, you may be driving the, you know, you may have your ethics training once, you know, once or twice a year. You're, so you're, you're driving the, the, the small car. This, is, this would be like the, the ultimate program. I mean, they have this, uh, but they have, but notice that, you know, winning with integrity. This is this whole program. It really says, hey, this is our whole culture is preserving our reputation, protecting our financial strength, you know, and that they've got this trust, compassion, courage, justice, wisdom, transparency, hope, all these things. You click on it and it opens up a tab and it talks about the vision. It talks about the company. I mean, this is very inspirational stuff. I mean, this is, you, you hardly would know you're in a, a company's ethics and compliance website area. So, um, but so this would be, this is a huge thing and you don't have to do this. And I know this seems like, you know, you need to have a whole staff um, working on this, but this is this is an example of just a company that is really trying to change the culture, and um, and they've got these you know character case studies and all kinds of things in there, and they even have this toolkit um, in the, with the winning and integrity where they have videos and articles, manuals, webcasts. They even have a section for kids. <laughs> so talking, you know, so this is this is really a big, big program. And this is an example of really teaching the um, the why, teaching the ethics and not just the compliance. So this is a, a pretty big example. Um, and of course, newsletters. Um, I encourage you to really, I think every company, if you have a newsletter, that's your that's your uh, best opportunity to build culture. And like I said, we would you know, there's lots of articles out there. You can use ours, or you can you can find them, and 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 um, and you know, taking taking advantage of those those opportunities. Um, so in this company, of course, the values were part of their ethical culture and are explicitly stated. <laughs> the website is specific; it's real. Um, it makes a serious investment. I mean, yes, this costs money, a lot of money to develop this, but you know, they might be saving money because they're they're not going to have as many issues, or they're not they don't have to retrain people or hire people, or or it just you know make, creating a culturally rich company that builds on its history. This is a company you know I want to work for this company. I mean I want to be here because um, I, I feel like they care and it's going to be it's going to support values and we're we're going to have you know unity. Um, another company I want to share is USAA. They have a really fantastic um, code of conduct. Um, and this company here, um, they have values. Um, they have a section where the CEO just has an entire section at the beginning about values, and that is so important to really see the CEO come out and state in your code of conduct, hey, this is what we believe. Here are our values. And, of course, the CEO needs to, you know, back up and, and live that and model that. But in that code of conduct, it includes ethical decision-making models, so how to. Like I said earlier, you need to have, I think every code of conduct um, should have something in there about how to, what to do, how to, not, not just who to call, um, but, but how to react to situations. And maybe you could, you know, they're all over the place. You could just Google um, ethical decision-making models. And there's, you know, there's a, there's like the nine steps and the four steps. We have a five-step plan that we use in our trainings here at Global Ethics Solutions. But, you know, go out and find those um, and, or, or come up with your own. I mean, we all have this system in place, clarifying, asking questions, you know, and all that. The code of conduct includes real scenarios throughout. So definitely creating a real, creating, you know, reality there. Um, values are integrated into the code of conduct. It's not just do's and don'ts. It's about values, 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 and that is so important. So, you know, your, your training and your 
um, whatever that may be, needs to be values and it needs to just hammer that home to build that ethical culture because building an ethical culture doesn't happen overnight. It, it is a process and people know it. I mean, I think, I think out there, you, you, I think you know when somebody is real or when they're just, um, they're just touting something or, um, you know, I mean, you, you know when it's the real deal. Um, I also wanted to talk, show you <laughs> the AARP. Um, this is, uh, their, in their code of conduct, they have a consistent theme of trust. Um, they have an ethical decision-making model. Um, in theirs, they have this, you know, Q&A, FYI. These are, these are really important um, that you have question and answers, um, uh, Q&As, and um, write your code of conduct in plain English. I know it, it is kind of a legal document that needs to be, you know, that you have to cover your bases and you've got to cover these topics, but you can write it in plain English. And that's, you know, that doesn't have to be in legalese. And it's obvious, make your company culture obvious. So these are some other, other uh, pieces of a, of a code of conduct. Um, and um, we could talk more about code of conduct. <laughs> But uh, if you have any comments on that, of course, you can put that in the chat as we go. Um, and I wanted to share, I just wanted you to know that you can do this. Yes, you don't need a million dollars. You don't need high-priced consultants and programs, initiatives. This is, you know what, you can just start this. If you're in leadership, today, today, start, start publicize, start communicating the culture. I mean, um, this, you know, it's, you can build this thing. You can do this. It doesn't take a million dollars to start saying, hey, here are the values we believe in, and this is, this is where they matter, and here's, here's what we're going to do. I mean, this doesn't take, uh, take a huge budget, so you can do it. The second thing here is to smart, start small and change your culture one step at a time. I mean, really, all, of it, ta all it takes is maybe – Finding that, finding that how-to and finding some meaningful connections and putting them into your training. Or you can go out and find a training program that works for you um, that can teach these things. I mean, do something. Start small. Maybe have a company ethical decision-making model that everybody goes through. It can even be making a big deal about your employee hotline and the calling and the reporting, call, call, it was something like that. I mean, just take something and just do it. And thirdly, be consistent. Um, it doesn't, it does, this is, doesn't happen overnight. And I would say if you did something once a month, really, uh, to encourage an ethical culture, then I think you will start seeing results. So be consistent with that. And of course, here are some tips uh, in implementing a training program. And I'm just going to, these are just some, some common tips. I'd make sure your mission and theme are there. Um, know your ethical culture, identify your goals and objectives. Um, to really think about the risks and, and assessment of the current and future risks and who's accountable to all that. And there needs to be that accountability and authority within the organization. Um, you know, management needs to be on board and you need to continually monitor and, 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 and um, improve that. And of course, some do's and don'ts here. <laughs> Make sure you're tailored to the right audience. The, it, this is important. I mean, we don't want to have, um, if you have a, a it's great. You need to have a program that really tailors to the. If you're talking, if it's just the office staff, make sure that it's tailored to that, and that they're not just glazing over. I mean, um, make sure you answer questions. Management, get management on board from the top. Make it interesting and interactive, um, not one-sided where you're just preaching at people or or talking down to them. But make it interactive and you know be honest and humble and sincere and, and show empathy. I mean. You know, I mean, we're all going through this thing together called life. We're all learning. We're all growing. I mean, I grow in my character and in my thoughts and, you know, my ups and downs. And you know what? We need to, we need to just be honest with each other and show empathy and be positive. Um, ethics training should be positive and not just a do's and don'ts. And I've, I've seen a lot of ethics training. I've seen some that just kind of made me cringe and I kind of feel beat up. When I when I've gone through it, or, or and others that make me feel encouraged, like wow, I can do this. This guy, can, you know, I can make a difference, and be passionate about it. You know, it'll show up in your work. And some some don'ts would be don't uh, don't be adversarial. Um, 
you know, keep it keep it simple. We don't have to have a legal a long legal document. I mean, if you're doing a uh, if you're doing a, a training for your 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 uh, manufacturing staff, you don't need to talk about all the legal background. Tell them what they need to know. If you're not an expert, find out find out what you need. I mean, and avoid that one size fits all. Try to keep things exciting, and you know, just as far as length and practicality goes, I find that 30 minutes to an hour is pretty good. Um, I've, I've done half day programs depending on how interactive, but really, you know, keep it, keep it, keep things about no more than an hour is, is what I try to do. Um, maybe, maybe two hours. I mean, I have some interactive things that I like to do, but I think people's, uh, that's pretty much the maximum that people can do. Um, and try to keep it relevant, you know, um, um, Enron's a long time ago, so find things that are, are pretty recent and uh, research and create and, you know, to cr do your research and do your homework. Um, and finally, you know, building an ethical organization requires, I think these are five steps from um, zingtrain.org, great site. Highly encourage you go there and check it out. But they, the specialty is organizational culture, but I love this. If you want to change the culture, you need to teach it. Okay, teach the culture you want, define what it is, live it, live it, especially management and everybody, measure it so you know that it's working and then reward it. So these are five steps that, I, that uh, to building an organizational culture. If you want more on this, I encourage you to visit zingtrain.org and check it out. And, uh, but really this is important because we do want to build organizational culture together. Uh, all right, so in summary, Remember your purpose. Remember why you're here. Um, you want to build trust and character and integrity, and all this matters. This really does matter, and it will make a difference when you start talking about these larger issues. So suture number one was to make that ongoing, not drive-by ethics training, do something every month, maybe weekly, but at least monthly, um, whether, it's, uh, whether it's newsletter, whether it's training, whether it's going and finding training, you can do that. Number, suture number two, make skills taught, modeled, and reinforced. So teach it, model it, and reinforce it. Uh, suture number three, explain and internalize the ethical concepts and theories. Don't be afraid to talk about a little philosophical stuff, you know. Get in there, roll up your sleeves, and talk about what is, what is honesty, what is character, you know. Um, how, do we show, how do we show this to each other? Uh, how do we show respect? All these things. These are, these are great issues that we should be talking about. And, of course, leadership and company culture matters. So, and, uh, so thank you so much. I, I hope this has helped. Um, my name is Mark Putnam. This is my, this is my contact information. If, you, if your company is looking for, for any um, solutions, we certainly have lots of those. I'd love to be on LinkedIn and contribute and love to just talk with you for about anything. Please feel free to, to contact me. Um, um, and I have, like I said, we have articles on LinkedIn and articles on our website that you are welcome to um, use in your company newsletters. So if you cite us and um, we would love to get out there and really give you some tools. We have a lot of tools to help you. Uh, we have the, our IntegraLine event management system. If you don't have a reporting hotline, you need one. Really, no matter what size company you have, employees need to have a place to go where people can, where they can report things anonymously. I mean, it's so awkward walking up to the boss. What if the boss is a problem? It's a small company. I mean, really, if you, if no matter what size company, um, you should have a hotline, and we offer that. So IntegraLine is our event management system. So it's, uh, um, I, I encourage you to take a look at that if that's something you need. And, of course, if you need actual training here in character and ethics, please visit our website. We have both. Um, we have not only our compliance training um, on all of these compliance topics, conflicts of interest, confidentiality, code of conduct, but we also have, have, we have courses on honesty and character and integrity and all those types of things, and we call those character connections. So please visit us if we can help you at all. And thank you so much for visiting and for joining us this morning. And um, please reach out if you have, if you have any questions or, or would like to talk with us. So thank you again. Wish you the very best and have a great week.